the special favor of Allah, Holy Allah, the universe is the body and its soul, Holy Allah, Holy الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المسلمين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله ما شاء الله viewers of Madani Channel welcome to a special series of programs yesterday today and tomorrow and in these series of programs we look at our rich heritage, we look at the rich history of uh, Islam and look to our past, look at the events that took place in the past. And the events that took place in the past, like I've said many, many times before, have been related to us over many, many centuries in the forms of the Hadith, in the forms of the Rawayat, in the forms of the parables. And each and every one of them has been passed down through generation to generation to generation for a reason. And the reason being is that we can benefit from them. They're not just passed down so we can have a, a good bedtime story. So inshallah, in this series of programs, we're trying to look at our past, look at yesterday, so that we can learn from yesterday, so that we can make a change today, so that we can have a better tomorrow. And as you know, viewers on the channel, we are in the blessed month of Muharram, and in the blessed month of Muharram, many events took place that had a great impact on the future of Islam. I think it's safe to say that if the events that took place during this month of Muharram, especially in the plains of Karbala, hadn't took place, hadn't took, hadn't followed the events that did take, then Islam might have been completely different today. However, before we begin, if you're we're going to give you a blessing of reciting through the park upon the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the intention with this is that you learn the blessing, you become habitual in reciting salutations upon the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you also pass this blessing on to others as well, so that other people can benefit as well. In today's, we are told that there is a hadith of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said that whoever desires to be presented in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal whilst Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with him Allah, who doesn't want this? Who doesn't want to be presented in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal with Allah pleased with him? Everybody wants that Hope, you know, Without doubt the aim of every Muslim is to be in the court of Allah and Allah be pleased with him Yes? The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving us the prescription he's giving us the formula here he says that whoever desires to be presented in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, whilst Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with him, he should send salat upon me in abundance. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. And the pious predecessors have said, if you use them on the channel, that when we refer to abundance, i.e. a lot, the pious predecessors have given a, a number. The number is 313. That is the number of the people, the Muslims that took part in the Battle of Badr. So 313, if we try and make an average, a habit of reciting through the park 313 times then inshallah, I pray that every Muslim around the world is successful in this, that when they are presented in the court of Allah, that Allah is happy with them. As I've said, we are in the month of Muharram and on virtually every program on Madri Channel, you're hearing about the events that took place on the plains of Karbala, where the grandson, and not only the grandson, but the family, of the grandson of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imam Hussain Radiallahu and all his family, all his main films of his family were martyred on the plains of Karbala and the sacrifices that they made. But them sacrifices that they made, they're a message there for us, you know, that, you know, the, the, the people that they were fighting against, the wretched Yazid. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the character of the wretched Yazid and his followers. And in talking about his character, I want you to first look at yourself. Because every Muslim that knows about the events that took place in the plains of Karbala, they will all say, Ya Hussein. They will all say, we love Hussein. You know, we all say that Hussein radiallahu sacrificed his life if only we could follow in his footsteps. And we claim to be the lovers of Imam Hussein radiallahu But if we look at our actions, then a question mark could be posed that do we really love? And if we don't love, who do we really follow? And inshallah, we're going to talk a little bit about that later on. But first, just to talk a little bit about 
the love of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for Imam Hussein radhiyallahu anhu is narrated that Sayyidina Abu Huraira narrates that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to us and Hasnain Karaman were accompanying him. One of them was on his right shoulder and the other was on his left shoulder. Allah Akbar. And he was kissing them both in turn. Allah Akbar. A person asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, do you love them? He replied, yes. Whoever loved them loved me. Whoever loved them, this is the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying, whoever loved them loved me. And whoever had animosity towards them had an animosity towards me. Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala was granted the standard of love for the messenger from the prophetic court. He held on to it his entire life. And when Marwan bin Hakam came to Sayyidina Abu Huraira at the time of his death, he said to him, since I have adopted your company, I've seen great love in you for the Asnan Karaman radiallahu ta'ala. Hearing this, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala, he sat up. I took wrestlers and he said, we were once went out in the company of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we'd only walked a short distance. When he heard the crying, he heard the crying of Asnan Karamayim, and they were both with their mother at that time. And he quickly went to them. And I heard him saying to Sayyidina Fatima Tuzara, what has happened to my sons? What has happened to my sons? And she replied, thirst. They are both crying due to thirst. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, advanced towards the water skin. And in the water skin, he couldn't see anything. There was not a single drop of water in the water skin. And at that time, there was a famine. There was very little water available. And he asked for everybody, is there anybody that can give, bring water to quench the thirst of my grandsons? And everybody replied that, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we don't have any water. The Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then asked, bring one of them to me, bring one of the children to me. And he brought one of the children, the child was brought to him. And the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, opened his mouth, put his blessed tongue, put his blessed tongue inside his grandson's mouth and the grandson sucked on his tongue. Allah Akbar. Sucked on the tongue of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And after a while, the thirst of the baby was quenched. And then the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then asked for the next child, bring the next child to me. And the next child was brought to him. And again, the, the child quenched the thirst by sucking on the tongue of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Abu Huraira further states, that why should I not love them? Why should I not love them when I have seen the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam treating them in this manner? Allah, but this is the love that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for his grandsons. And there's even an instance where Sayyidina Hazrat Ali radiallahu the father of Imam Hussain and Imam Hussain, when he comes to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, instead of saying, my sons, when instead of talking about my sons, he said, your grandsons, that, that is the they have got that great status that they are your grandsons. And he, he elevates them by status. He doesn't say my sons. He says to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your sons. And so this principle we need to learn. That, that just as love for the Sahaba and love for the Ahl Bayt is a means of salvation in the world and the hereafter. Similarly, having hatred and animosity for the Ahl Bayt and the companions is also destruction for us in this dunya and the hereafter. It is stated that an individual began to speak ill and disrespect the Sahaba in front of Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas And he said to him, desist from this repugnant act of yours, otherwise I will supplicate against you. However, that disrespectful man replied, I do not care for your dua against me. Your supplication against me cannot do anything to me. Hearing this, he was overcome with rage and he made the following dua. He said, oh Allah, if this individual has disrespected the beloved Sahaba of your beloved Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, make him an example of your wrath today so that the others will take heed from it. After the dua was complete, as soon as that individual set foot outside of the masjid, a mad camel suddenly came running, knocked him down, sat on top of him and pushed on him with so much force that his ribs were crushed and he died at once. Allahu Akbar. Witnessing this scene, the people ran to Sayyidina Saad and began to congratulate him as his du'as were accepted and the enemy of the Sahaba were destroyed. Views of the channel. Devotees of the Sahaba and the Alibayt. We hear of the terrifying end of the one who insulted the Sahaba. And undoubtedly it is a reality that the people of Allah Azawajal are causing them harm in any way is to invite the punishment of Allah Azawajal. One wretched individual from amongst them 
is Yazid and his followers, who were not only guilty of insulting the Sahaba, rather they also have the blood of the martyrs of the noble al on their hands. And this was a, such a terrible act that the Islamic world has always condemned it and will continue to do so until the day of judgment. It is stated, viewers of the channel, that Mawlana Mufti Sayyid Muhammad Nimuddin Murabadi, Rahmatullah the states, that Sayyidina Imam Hussein's presence was a great obstacle for the freedom of Yazid. He knew that he would not be able to act freely in Sayyidina Imam Hussein's blessed era, and his evils were not going to be tolerated at all by Imam Hussein radiallahu He could see that the whip of a religious person like Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu is always hovering above his head. Therefore, Yazid was even more of an enemy of Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu and his martyrdom was a means of pleasure for him. Astaghfirullah. As soon, listen to this views of Mother Channel. As soon as Imam Hussein radiallahu was martyred, Yazid became openly free and all types of sins became commonplace. Immorality, marriage between brother and sister, usury and drinking of alcohol became openly widespread and there were no strictness on Salah. Rebellious reached its peak. Abomination reached such an extent that Muslim bin Uqba took an army of 12,000 or 20,000 to Medina Taiba to conquer it. This purposeless army caused immense destruction in Medina Taiba and committed murders and atrocities amongst the neighbors of the beloved Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They plundered the homes of those who lived there. They martyred more than 1,000 people, including 700 blessed companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Boys were imprisoned and such vile acts were committed, which are even unpleasant to mention. Horses were tied to the pillars of Masjid al Nabi. People could not offer salah for three days. Three days not offering salah in Masjid al Nabi. Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Musayba radiallahu remained in Masjid al Nabi under the pretext of being insane. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Hanzala radiallahu said, We feared that due to the evil practices of the Yazidis, we might be bombarded with stones from the skies. Thereafter, this evil army left for Makkah al Mukarramah. And the chief of this army died on the way with another person filling his position. Having reached Makkah, these irreligious people showered stones with a catapult and due to this rain of stones, the courtyard of the sacred Haram became filled with stones and the pillars of the Masjid al Haram broke and these people burnt the cover of the sacred Kaaba and its roof. The horns of the ram, which was sacrificed in exchange for Sayyidina Ibn Ismail al-Islam, had been preserved on the roof as a relic. They were also burnt. The sacred Kaaba remained uncovered for many days and the people of Makkah al Makarma suffered severe tribulation inflicted upon them by the Yazidi army. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. The Yazidi army, the Yazidi people, proved his immorality during his reign by propagating many wrongdoings. For example, he made it publicly accepted to marry Mahram, those relatives with whom nikah is haram, and to deal in interest, and he violated the sanctity of Makkah and Medina. He cruelly martyred the Sahaba and the Ali Bayt. Also listening to songs, drinking alcohol, not offering salah. In short, he committed every act, every act that is prohibited in Sharia. <sighs> Views of Mani Channel. We just mentioned a little bit about Yazid and his followers. And in mentioning this, you know, you can imagine what type of era it was, what type of place it was at that time that the Muslims, the sincere, pious Muslims, what kind of, you know, what kind of life they were that, you know, they were in Masjid the Nabi and, and they couldn't read the namaz in Masjid the Nabi. They were in Madinat al Manavra and the Makkah Sheikh was being pelted, the Kaaba was being stoned, the Khilafi Kaaba had been burnt, destruction was taking place all around them. And this all happened because of the wretched Yazid, because of his character. We're, using the channel. we're going to take a small break now. We're going to go to the first package of the day, inshallah. When we come after the package, inshallah, then we'll continue. And we'll talk a little bit more about the character of the Z Yazid in particular. And then at the same time, when we're talking about his character, I want you to reflect on our character. Because we mentioned earlier on that, you know, Salah was something that was not happening. Yeah, that immorality was happening, that music was happening, that alcohol was happening, that all of these things were happening. And now you ask yourself, ask yourself, viewers of Malishnal, that are we not following the acts of Yazid? Are we following the acts of Yazid and his followers? Or are we sticking 
to the strict shariat that the Prophet of Allah brought us, the shariat that was passed down through generation to generation, the, gener the, the shariat, the sunnah that the Imam Hussain adopted and lived his life on. These are the questions that we need to ask and inshallah after the break, we'll continue this. Let's go to the first package of the day and inshallah when we come back, we'll continue this topic. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, the blessed days of Hajj have passed and the special days of Muharram, the day of Ashura, they're about to come in this sacred month. In both the end of the year and the start of the Islamic year, such an amazing lesson we have been taught. In the story of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, we learn that that thing that Allah has blessed you with, sacrifice it. You will reach success. Hazrat Ibrahim Islam sacrificed his son for the sake of Islam, for the sake of the one God, the true God. And he, he begged in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at an old age, Ya Allah Azawajal, bestow me with a child. And when that child came, he sacrificed that child. Now in the story of Karbala, a deep lesson is learned from this event where Imam Hussein, he sacrifices his family, he sacrifices his children, he sacrifices himself for the sake of Islam. So at the end of the year and at the start of the year, we are left with this story or this moral or this lesson that the preservation of religion depends upon sacrifice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, you will never attain success until you sacrifice that thing you love the dearest. So this formula tells us, number one, Success, number two, the dearest thing to you. You have to sacrifice to attain it. So this lesson of the end of year and start of year tells us that to attain success, you have to sacrifice big things. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Viewers of the channel, you're watching yesterday, today and tomorrow. And today we're talking about the character of the wretched Yazid and his followers and the destruction that they caused at that time. You know, they say that when a person gets honor, fame, wealth, authority, then that can sometimes go to the head. And when that goes to the head, they become rebellious. So we need to be very careful that if Allah Azza ever bestows upon us, wealth, honor, status, authority, that we remain firmly footed, you know, firmly footed to the, to the ground. You know, we remain on the ground, we may remain level-headed and we don't become bigger than ourselves. Because otherwise we can also think that because nobody can question me, nobody can answer me, nobody can tell me what to do, I can do whatever I want to do. And that sometimes happens in people's families where the head of the family thinks, well, nobody here can tell me what to do. I can do whatever I want. And he enforces things upon his family that are against Shariat. And I've heard many, many times that the head of the family will say, don't talk to me about Islam. Don't talk to me about Shariat. I'm the head of the family. I will do whatever I want. Allahu Akbar. Again, isn't this an act of Yazid that he thinks, Yazid thought I can get away with anything. I can do whatever I want. And so as a result of that, he became rebellious. And as a result of that, he thought, I can do whatever I want. He can change the law. He can do whatever he wants. But that is happening today. And I give you the example that it happens in people's households. That people, because they're the head of the family, they're not willing to listen to what other people have to say. Because I'm the head of the family. My, what I say goes. Well, it might go here. You might get away with it here. But on the day of judgment, you'll say it will not go there. On the day of judgment, you will be presented in the court of Allah Azza wa Jalla and you will not be able to say, well, I, I made a decision yeah, that I am going to go against Shariat. I made a decision that I'm going to go against the commands of Allah and I stand by that. You take a brave man to say on that day, you will not be able to say it. You'll be drowning in your sweat. You'll be drowning in your blood that will be pouring out your eyes. So again, we need to be very careful that as power comes to us, as fame comes to us, as wealth comes to us, as authority comes to us, as even education comes to us, knowledge comes to us, that we remain level-headed and control ourselves. In the case of Yazid, he became so rebellious 
that due to his love for authority and control, that he also insulted the Sahaba and caused harm to them, hurt their feelings, and even martyred some of them. Even though the Sahaba are those blessed personalities, views of Michelle, they are those blessed personalities about who the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi himself has said. In many hadiths about the Sahaba in which have come from the lips of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in one instance, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Honor my Sahaba. Honor my Sahaba for they are the most righteous amongst you. He further said, the best of my ummah are the generation, are my generation. I, the noble Sahaba. Then those who come after them and then those who follow them. So the best, the best are those. The companions are, they are the best generation. They are our ideal. And you hear on Madhuri channel that Amir al-Sunnah says that her sahabi, jannati, jannati, that all of the companions are in paradise. All of the companions are in paradise. All of the companions are in paradise. Ar sahabi hi nabi, jannati, jannati. This is a slogan of Amir al-Sunnah that he's telling us, that he's informing us. And whoever says anything against this, whichever the sahaba they mention that this person is not, then they are wrong. Our Iman is such that every companion of the Prophet of Allah is in paradise. Coming back to Yazid. Allah, Yazid the accursed could not attain the proximity of the companions, despite attaining the blessed area, nor could he gather the provisions for his salvation in the hereafter by revering them. He had the golden opportunity of Yazid. He was there with them. You know, can you imagine being able to take the blessings of the Sahaba and then refusing it. Being able to take the blessings of that Ahl Bayt, that immediate family of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam refusing, not only refusing it, but abusing it. Not only abusing it, but martyring them. Unbelievable. The oppressive Yazid, he considered Imam Hussain Radiallahu to be a threat in the way of his rule. Whereas what did Imam Hussain Radiallahu Anhu have to do with this temporary world? He was the king of the Muslim Ummah hearts. Yesterday is today, and it will be until the world exists. However, Yazid, the accursed, destroyed his dunya as well as the hereafter. This implies that the love of this world is the cause of every evil and mischief. The whole chaotic destruction is caused by the love of this world. And so we need to remove the love of this world from our hearts with the Manshan. If we have this love of this world, then we can become overcome by this world. We can become controlled by this world. In the same way that if you're traveling on a journey, we say that this journey of life is like traveling on a ship. And the water is the dunya. So we have to travel through the dunya. We have to travel through the sea to get to our destination. And that's fine. But the problem happens when the dunya starts coming in the ship. When the sea water gets inside the ship. And what happens is we sink into the dunya. And when we sink into the dunya, we don't reach our destination. So this dunya is like that ship. Yes, we have to, tra we have to be in this dunya. But don't let the dunya control us. We need to control the dunya. The love of this world Views of Malachal makes a person oppressive. The love of this world makes a person heartless and reckless. The love of this world makes a person stone-hearted. The love of this world ruins one's good deeds. The love of this world is a, calm, a cause of harming one's religion. The love of this world is a cause of misguidance. And this world, the love of this world, causes a distance from pious deeds. The love of this world deprives a person from the love of Allah Azza wa Jal and love of the Rasul. The love of this world makes a person blind in committing sin because he loves the world and he doesn't care then he, he thinks he's going to live forever and he commits all sorts of sin because he doesn't care in short there is no goodness views them in the channel of any sort in loving this world and the love of this world there is a hadith the love of this world listen to this the love of this world is the root of all sins Allah. it is stated that six things destroy the good action number one Staying in search of people's flaws, looking at other people's mistakes. Number two, hardness of the heart. Number three, love of this world. Number four, lack of modesty. Number five, long hope. And six, oppression beyond the limit. Allah, we hear that how insignificant this dunya is. This dunya has no significance at all. You know, we have to pass through this dunya, but this dunya has no significance. The honorable companions, Asked the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the best amongst us? And he replied that the best amongst you is he who is more adverse to the world and more inclined towards the hereafter. The person who is adverse to the world and he's inclined, he wants to, he was looking at the hereafter. He is the one. He is the one that's the best amongst you. And so our focus 
Yes, we live in this dunya. Yes, we, we need that car, we need that house, we need all the material things. Yes, we need all of that. I'm not disputing that. But if then things that you are searching for in this dunya, that car, that house, that money, that wealth, whatever it is, I'm not going to say it's haram, but if in searching for them things, it causes destruction of your akhirat, if as a result of you chasing after that car, if as a result of you chasing after that house, if as a result of you working day and night to get that business established, if as a result of that, you're damaging your akhirat, you're damaging your hereafter, you're damaging your grave, then there's no benefit to you at all. Yes, you might get a little bit of pleasure in this dunya, but when you're in that dark and lonely grave on your own, and you're facing the sins, that you have committed to be able to buy that car, when you're facing the sins that you have done whilst running that business, whilst facing the sins, well, the money that you made in buying that house and all them sort of things, when you are questioned about it, then, then you'll realize that the house has no value, that car has no value, that business has no value, and now I'm in this dark and lonely grave and I've got snakes and scorpions around me. What value is that house? What value is that car? What value is these things? But then it's too late. So I'm saying to you, that car's okay, that house is okay, that business is okay, all of them things are okay, no problem. Speak to that Alifta, speak to the Muftis and say, yes, I want to do this business, is it halal? And they will tell you. And if they say it's halal, all well and good, but if as a result of you living your life, achieving these material goals, which I say to you are allowable in Islam, but in achieving these material goals, if it causes the destruction of your hereafter, if it causes the destruction of your grave, if it causes the destruction of you on the day of judgment, if it causes you to fall off the bridge of Sarath, if it causes you to enter the hellfire, no value whatsoever. No value whatsoever. So being, you know, averse to this dunya is where we need to be very, very careful and, you know, live in this world, but don't live in this world, if you know what I mean. Live in this world, but don't be attracted, you know, attached to this world. You know, you are a, a, a traveler in this world. You know, just this weekend, I attended a funeral of someone that was younger than me. That could have been me. That could have been you. It happens. People pass away at all ages. So you do not know how long you're going to be in this dunya. But the hereafter is for infinity. The hereafter is for infinity forever. So a fool is he who's running after a short period of time when he should be making his house in infinity. You're trying to make a massive house in the dunya, but nothing in that place that you're going to live forever. And not only that, if you're not careful, then you're going to end up in the hellfire. You're going to be punished for all the sins that you committed. So that house that you made in here, not only have you not made anything in the hereafter, but you're also going to be punished in the hellfire. And logic would say to you that this is a foolish man that's doing this. But unfortunately, we're all doing this. Why? Because we succumb, we're, 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 we're sunk in this love for the dunya. This love for the dunya is sinking, we're like in sinking sand that we've been pulled in. Yeah, and it's hard to pull yourself out. And it's hard to pull yourself out because people, you see people around you. And the peer pressure of he's got a new car, I need a new car. He's got a bigger house, I need a bigger house. He's got this, I need to have this. And so we're pulled into it because it's what everybody else is doing. And this peer pressure, you know, we talk about peer pressure and we talk about peer pressure affects children. But peer pressure can affect anybody. Peer pressure can affect anybody at any age. And what happens is as we get older, again, we succumb to peer pressure. We end up wanting that house, even though we can't afford it. We're wanting that car, even though we can't afford it. We want the status of a big house back home, even though we can't afford it. We're up to debt, you know, as much debt as possible that we can possibly have. I've, I've heard someone say it, and he said to me that if I live all my life, and if Allah Azawajal was enabled, would enable me to live all my life again and work all my life, I'd never be able to pay off my debt. Why have you got yourself into this situation? And it's not as if he's sitting there on the street starving. He's living a life, he's got a nice house, he's got a nice car. Why has he got himself into this situation? Because he's been sucked into the dunya. That the dunya sucked him in, and the dunya eventually will spit you out. And when he spits you out, you're in that dark and lonely grave. And that dunya, when it spits you out of the dunya, you won't take anything with you. So we need to be very wary of this views of many channel that that time is not far away. And so we need to be inclined towards the hereafter. I think we're going to go to the Kalam of the day now, inshallah. And we're going to, hopefully the Kalam is about 
the Alibad, the companions, the family of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Please listen to this, try and understand this. And the reason why these kalams are there to instill the love of the Alibad inside us, the love of the Sahab inside us, the love of ultimately the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ultimately the love of Allah Azawajal inside our heart. So please listen to this club. And inshallah, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the characteristics, the character of Yazid and his followers. Sallu ala al-Khabib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mustafa, Mustafa, or unkiyal, Panjitan, Panjitan, heba kama, kama. Mustafa, Mustafa, or unkiyal, Panjitan, Panjitan, heba kama. Mujpe kitna niazi karam ho gaya. Dunia kehne lagi panjitan ka gada. Is garane ka jab se mein naukar hua. Sab se achhi meri naukari ho gaya. Hai ba gama. Main to panjitan ka gulam hoon. Main to panjitan ka gulam hoon. मुझे इश्क है तो रसूल से ये करम है सारा बतूल का मेरे मुँह से आए महक सदा जो मैं नाम लूँ तेरा जो चमन से है मुझे इश्क उनके वतन से है मुझे इश्क उनकी गली से है मुझे इश्क है तो अली से है मुझे इश्क है तो हसन से है मुझे इश्क है तो हुसैन से मुझे इश्क शाह जमन से है मैं तो पंज तन का गुलाम हूँ मैं तो पंज तन का गुलाम हूँ मुस्तफा और उनकिया पंज तन है बागमा मैं तो पंज तन का से वो सर जुदा 
जहाँ इश्क है वहीं कर बला मेरी बात उन ही की बात है मेरे सामने वो ही रात है वो ही जिनको शेर खुदा कहे जिन्हें बाबे सोल्ले अला कहे वो ही जिनको जाते अली कहे वो ही पोखता है मैं तो खाम हूँ मैं तो पंज तन का वो लाम हूँ मैं तो पंज तन का वो लाम हूँ मुस्तफा और किया पंज तन है बागवा मैं तो पंज तन का वो लाज तू मैं तो पंज तन का वो लाज तू मैं कमर हूँ शायरे बे मेरी है सियत ही भला है क्या वो है बाद शाहों के बाद शाह मैं हूँ उनके दर का बस एक गदा मेरा पंज तन से है वासिता मेरा नेस बतों का है सिलसिला मैं फकीर खैर अनाम हूँ मैं तो पंज तन का वो लाम हूँ मैं तो पंज तन का वो लाम हूँ क्या बात रजा उस चमन स्थान करम की जिसमें हुसैन और हसन फूल हसन फूल सल्लू अल हबीब सल्लल्लाहु सल्ला मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम अल्लाह एक्सेप्ट हुस अमंगस द स्लेव्स ऑफ द पंच दन पाक द अहले बैत ऑफ द प्रोफेट अल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम Allah Akbar. Wisdom and Channel today we are talking about the character, the characteristics of Yazid and his followers and the evils that Yazid openly committed uh, at that time. But unfortunately, what is happening views of many channel that them same evils that were committed then that have been recorded in history as something that was so horrific, some of the things that he did some of the sins that he was committing are unfortunately in today's time commonplace as well and maybe they've been commonplace for a long time as well but it's something that we need to ponder over and i think we're going to just talk a little bit about some of those things that in the time of yazid he brought those sins into common practice not only brought them into common practice but promoted them and unfortunately muslims are playing a part in that today drinking alcohol drinking alcohol was also one of those evil amongst the evils of yazid and there's no doubt in the fact that drinking alcohol is definitely haram and drinking it whilst considering it to be permissible is disbelief you know if you drink it and think it's halal then this takes you out the fold of islam Remember this view of Muhammad that alcohol it is stated is the root of all evils as a person indulges in every sort of sin easily after drinking alcohol because a drunk person loses his sense loses control 
loses everything, and he commits all sorts of sins. And that's why it's called as the root of all evil. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu is reported to have said that refrain from the mother of evils, i.e. alcohol, because there was a person who lived before your time. He would worship Allah and live in seclusion. A woman fell in love with him and she sent a servant towards him requesting him to testify as a witness. Hence the man reached there. Whatever door he entered would be closed behind him until he came in front of a very beautiful and attractive lady. A boy was standing near to her and there was a large glass vessel there containing alcohol. The woman said to the worshipper, I have not called you here to testify, rather I want you to murder this boy and indulge in fornication with me or drink this wine. And if you refuse, I will scream loudly and disgrace you. When the man realized that there was no way to escape from this difficult situation, he said, give me a glass of alcohol to drink. The lady made him drink the alcohol and he asked for more. He continued drinking in this manner until he committed fornication with the woman when he also murdered the boy. Therefore, you must continue refraining from alcohol. By Allah, Azzawajal, Iman and the habit of drinking alcohol cannot exist in a person's heart. Indeed, one will soon remove the other. Allah. So this is the first evil that we mentioned that Yazid and his companions committed. And what we need to look at, viewers of Manchala, we need to ask ourselves, are we now taking part in, in this act of Yazid? And we see, unfortunately, that, you know, we make excuses for it. We start selling the alcohol and thinking that it's okay to sell it. It's okay to work in the places. But these are also cursed. Those people that, you know, sell alcohol are also cursed people as well. And then, unfortunately, we think, oh, well, you know, we're just with the boys. We're just with the lads. What's wrong if we just have a few glasses? And they start drinking alcohol as well. And so, unfortunately, this, this sin of drinking alcohol, you know, is gradually getting worse and worse in our society. There was a time where... Maybe Muslims used to sell alcohol but not drink it, but now unfortunately Muslims are also drinking alcohol as well. So that's the first thing, that if you are, then this is an act of Yazid. It's something that you need to repent from, it's something that you need to stop from. The second thing that I want to share with you, viewers of my channel, that is another act of Yazid, is listening to songs and music. And again, we know that listening to songs and music is impermissible, strictly forbidden, and it's an act leading to the hellfire. This act of listening to music has been prohibited in the blessed hadith. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu said, on the day of judgment, Allah azza wa jal will pour molten lead into the ears of the one who listens to music. In another hadith, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu said, save yourself from songs and music because they incite the feelings of lust, destroy modesty, and they are akin to alcohol, I mean the afesi of intoxication. In another hadith, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu said, Song and amusement grow hypocrisy in the heart as water grows greenery. I swear by the one in whose power is my life. Indeed, the Quran and the remembrance of Allah make faith grow in the heart as water grows green grass. May Allah Azawajal give us the ability to use these blessings, these easier of blessings, to listen to those things that we should be listening to. And nowadays it's all too easy to listen to music. It's also easy to, to take part in these things and you know, it's just, we think, oh, we're just passing a bit of time, aren't we? We're just passing a bit of time, listen to a bit of music, what's wrong with it? But again, you are committing a sin. And again, by making it halal, by saying, well, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, by saying that whatever is forbidden in Islam, by you saying there's nothing wrong with it, it can take you out of the fold of Islam. So again, we need to be very careful on this. And there were two things so far that we mentioned, the alcohol and listening to music. Inshallah, after the break, we're going to listen to, we've got a small package now, we're going to listen to this package, inshallah. When we come back after the break, we're going to look at this, uh, a few more things, and then ask ourselves, who do we really follow, who do we really love? Let's go to the break. Sallu ala al-Khabib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyiduna Ahmad bin Muhammad Salawi, rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi has said, Once I was to undertake a journey, before I began it, I visited the blessed shrine of the beloved Prophet and respectfully said, O oh, the one who has been empowered to help his devotees in the world and the hereafter, I will pass through deserts and jungles during my journey. If I get into any trouble, I will pray to Allah and seek help by mentioning your blessed name. I then visited the blessed tombs of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and made a similar prayer. Afterwards, I began my journey, traveling through jungles and deserted places for a week. 
During the journey, I fell into a well that had plenty of water on it. From the time of Salatul Chash to Salatul Asr, I struggled hard to get out of it, but could not succeed. My life was in danger. All of a sudden, I recalled that I had pleaded with beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sheikh and Kareemain at the time of departure. I once again supplicated, O oh my beloved, O oh Rasul of Allah, fulfill my supplication and rescue me. I also made supplication in the court of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar anhuma in a similar way. In no time, someone picked me up from the well and sat me on its top. In this way, with the help of the beloved Rasul sallallahu I narrowly escaped death. May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy upon him and forgive us without accountability for his sake. Faryad ummati jo kare hale zar mein Faryad ummati jo kare hale zar mein Mumkin nahi ke khair bashar ko habar na ho Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alihi wa sallam Viewers of the channel, you're watching yesterday, today and tomorrow. And today we're talking about the characteristics of Yazid, his character and his followers. And we mentioned before the break that one of his characteristics was listening to music. And, you know, not only did he listen to music, but he used to, obviously, at that time there was no radios, there was no electronic playing devices that he could listen to. He would have the musicians in front of him. He would have the dancing women in front of him. He would have women dancing in front of him. Now, this act of Yazid obviously was not something that never happened, never happened in the lifetime of Imam Mahmoud Hussain radiallahu that he never, you know, touched or spoke or looked at an armed woman. And yet here we have Yazid, you know, with dancing women in his court and dancing there in front of him. Now you may say, well, you know, I don't go to them places where there are dancing women. Okay, okay. But how many of us, when we're flicking through channels, we stop on a channel and we watch a woman dancing there, singing there, Okay, we're not in the court and they're not in our court as such, but we're watching and dancing. It's the same thing, isn't it? What is the difference between watching a woman dance in front of you or watching a woman on your PC laptop or your mobile phone? It's the same thing. So again, this act of watching dancing women, listening to music is an act of Yazid. It's not an act of Imam Hussain. And so this again, we need to be very careful. The third act of Yazid, what he brought back, he brought back interest. The major sin of interest Whereas interest is absolutely haram in Islam. And one of the interest is also again spreading in our society today. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the sin of interest has 70 parts. Amongst them, the lowest level is the person who commits adultery with his mother. That having interest is like committing adultery with your mother. That's the lowest. Astaghfirullah. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, though interest is outwardly abundant, its outcome ends in shortage. In another hadith, the Prophet of Allah says, On the day of judgment, the one who consumes interest will be raised in such a state that he will be insane and he will be terrified. In another hadith, the Prophet of Allah says, Insanity, insanity spreads in a nation where interest is prevalent. Astaghfirullah. And again, this is something where we're putting our money into these schemes so that we can get interest and earn money. And again, earning that interest is haram in Islam. We should refrain from this. The fourth, and basically the final thing that I want to talk to you about, the acts of Yazid. That so far we've talked about those things that maybe, you know, we can say that we're refraining from. Maybe we can say that, you know, we don't drink alcohol. We don't listen to music. We don't have the dancing women. We don't partake in interest. But the final thing that I want to mention is something that I'm afraid that a lot of us, and I could probably safely say the majority of Muslims are taking part in. And that's abandoning Salah. Not praying the Salah. The majority of Muslims are heedless of praying Salah. And it's one thing that when you think about it, that a child that's brought up in a Muslim household with limited religious education from the age of six, seven, eight, as soon as he has a basic understanding, a basic understanding of his surroundings around you, he will be able to tell you that namaz is fard. It's the thing that we teach all our children. 
بیٹا نماز اس فرض پڑھنی ہے بیٹی نماز اس فرض پڑھنی ہے وی ہیئر ایوری ڈے دی امام صاحب سیز اے دی مبلک سے ایوری بک سیز اے ابلیکشری نماز ابلیکشری دی فائیو پلیز آف نماز دی فائیو پلیز آف اسلام دی فائیو پلیز آف اسلام وی ٹاک اباؤٹ فاسٹنگ ان دی منتھ آف رمضان زکات حج دی نماز وی ٹاک اباؤٹ پرینگ فائیو ٹائمز اے ڈے ایوری بڈی نوز ایون دی نان مسلمز نو دی سلا از ابلیکشری اپن دی مسلمز فائیو ٹائمز اے ڈے بٹ وی ہیئر لیس آف اٹ وی آر ابینڈننگ دی سلا اینڈ انڈیٹلی سلا وی آر ٹولڈ از ان سمبل آف آر فیتھ and it's an essence of our worship. And there are many, many, many hadiths regarding Salah. And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a person will be asked on the day of Jidnut first. The first question he will be asked will be about his Salah. So a Salah is something that is very, very important to us. But again, we're abandoning it. And again, we've said it so many times that we don't free time for it. We think it's a burden on our puzzles. Whereas the companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they didn't take it as a burden. The Alibad, they didn't take Salah as a burden. The pious predecessors, they didn't take Salah as a burden. The Yazidis, the followers of Yazid and Yazid himself, they took Salah as a burden upon them. And they abandoned the Salah and they promoted the abandonment of Salah. And again, you may say, well, I don't promote the abandonment of Salah, but again, we do. Because we look down on those people that are going to the masjid. Why are you going to the masjid? You're going to become a mulvi. Come on, don't bother. You can read it later on. What are you doing? You're missing our game up as a result to you. You know, we're going to have to finish this game early. As a result of you, this has happened. And we, we put peer pressure on that individual not to read his namaz. So you're putting that pressure on him to stop him reading salah. You're putting pressure on him to abandon the salah. You are following the act of Yazid by promoting the abandonment of salah. And you may think it's extreme, but this is what's happening. So in this month of Muharram, where all of us, we make a statement. We hear about the events that took place in Karbala. We hear about the love of the al We hear about the love that the, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for the Asnan Karaman. We hear about the love and the significance of that love. And that love is part of our Iman. And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that whoever loves them loves me. And whoever has animosity towards them has animosity towards me. So this month when we hear about these events, it's there to develop that love inside us for the al Love inside us for the family of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that ultimately we say, we make the claim that we are the lovers of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. We are the followers of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. But are we? Do we really follow Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala? Yes, we say it. You'll all say, yeah, we follow him. But if I was to ask you a question, do you follow Yazid? No, astaghfirullah, I don't follow Yazid. But do we? And I've given you some examples today. That the Prophet of Allah, that the Yazid, he abandoned the Salah. Imam Hussain radiallahu never missed the Salah. Who do we follow? Who are you following? Ask yourself, who do you follow? I'm asking myself, who am I following? Am I following Imam Hussain or am I following Yazid? Imam Hussain never missed the Salah. Imam Hussain never talked to non and women. Imam Hussain, you know, never watched singing or dancing. Imam Hussain was a follower of the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He adopted the Sunnah in every aspect of his life. All of the things that I mentioned, Yazid didn't do. So the question that you need to ask yourself in this month and all your life, who do you really follow? Who do you really love? We say that we love Imam Hussain. We say that we love the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But do we really follow? That love is not just something from lip service that comes from your tongue. You cannot just say, I love the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's enough. You know, I've given the example before that a person, he says, I love my mother, I love my mother. He puts a poster in the back of his car, I love my mother. He has a flag, I love my mother. But then the mother says, Beta, take the rubbish out. No, I got time. Beta, do this for me. Why should I do this for me? Beta, can you go here? No, I don't want to go there. Beta, don't go there. No, I want to go there. We don't listen to what our mother says. When our mother tells us to do something, we don't listen to it. We still claim we love. This isn't love. If a person acts like that in front of his mother, and yet he tells the whole world, I love, would you believe him? You say he's a fool. But when the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us, when the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is ordering us to pray, when the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is ordering us to fast in the month of Ramadan, when the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is ordering us to pay our zakat, when the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is ordering us to perform a hajj that is fard upon us, then do we listen? And if we listen, and if we follow, then 
then we can get onto them footsteps on that ladder of saying that we love the Prophet of Allah But if you don't read your salah, if you don't fast during the month of Ramadan, you don't pay the zakat that is due upon you, you don't go on the hajj when it's far upon you, you don't adopt the, adopt the son of the Prophet of Allah you don't know anything about him. You don't know anything about his life. You don't know about how he lived his life, how he treated his, his companions, you don't know how he treated his wives, how he treated his children, how he treated his grandchildren. And all the things, and you do not know about the lives of the Sahaba, and the Sahaba are the example there. They live their life as an example of how to love the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that loving him is part of our Iman. How to love him? Look at the lives of the Sahaba. Because they were the examples of the lovers. These are the people that we need to follow to see how to love the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we don't know anything about them. So how can we claim to love the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when we don't know how to love? How can we claim to love the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when we don't listen to his orders? How can we claim to love the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when we don't adopt the Sunnah in our lives? It's just lip service then, isn't it? And as Muslims, how can you expect to be successful in just lip service by just saying something? You need to live it. And a lover is not part-time. You know, if someone loves someone, someone dearly loves someone, yeah? It's not something that you do part-time. It's not something that you do for half an hour in a day. It's not something that you do for one day in a week. It's not something that you do for one month in a year. It's not something that you do one day in a year. It's not something that you do for a few nights in a year. Loving someone is 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, your whole life. And if you live your life like that, then you can claim to love the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you can live your life like that, then you can claim to love Imam Hussein Radiallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then you can claim to love the Ahli Bayt. And ultimately you can claim to love the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if you don't, and if you are committing those acts of Yazid, then Astaghfirullah, I pray that that title is not put on you. That you love Yazid. That you follow Yazid. That you listen to his ways. You're listening to his ways. You're listening to the shaitanic ways of Yazid by not adopting your salah. you listen to the shaitanic ways of Yazid by committing the sin of alcohol. you listen to the shaitanic ways of Yazid by listening to music, watching dancing women. This is the satanic ways of Yazid. This is what you're listening to. And if you're listening to someone, you're following them, then obviously you're amongst the companions of them. Now I'm not going to tell you today, and I don't need to tell you, the people that watch these programs are intelligent people. Where is Yazid today? He'll be in the deepest hellfire. He'll be in the deepest hellfire. Where is Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu? He is in paradise. He is the youth, the king of the youth of paradise. So you make a decision. Grow up and make a decision. Who am I following? And if you are not following the right person, then you need to change your direction. I said it a couple of days ago on Madhuri Channel that when you're on the road here in the UK, if you're on the motorway and you look at the direction, you know that if I continue on this direction, I'll get there. And if I want to get there, then I need to turn around. You need to ask yourself, where am I going? Where is my life heading? What, who am I following? What's going to be my end destiny if I carry on like this? Because again, this is another shaitanic whisper. I'll sort myself out later. You know, let me, just, let me just get this sorted out and then I'll become a person that reads my name. Let me, let, me just, let me just get this house built. Let me just get my children my let me, let me just get this business work. Let me just get that kitchen extension. Let me just get this car and then I'll start reading my namaz. People don't see, people build houses, they don't get a chance to live in them. Yeah, because the angel of death comes. Who can say to me that they will be there alive before the angel of death comes to and all the things you want to do? You're not going to happen. So if you're going to change, you need to change today. Not tomorrow, not yesterday. We talked on this program yesterday, today and tomorrow. Yesterday is gone. It's happened. It's finished. All we can do is repent for what has happened yesterday. Tomorrow, who knows whether tomorrow is going to come. If you want to make a change, today is the date. Today is the day and now is the date. And if you're watching this program live on Mandari Channel, then today, before you go to sleep, you must read your Salatul Maghrib. Before you go to sleep, you must perform your Salatul Isha. Tomorrow morning, you must get up for Salatul Fajr. Why? These are the acts of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are the acts of Imam Hussein. And if you miss them, if you miss your Salatul Maghrib, if you miss your Salatul Isha, if you miss your Salatul Fajr, and you miss the other Salah, then these are the acts of Yazid and all his wretched followers. My dear Islam brothers and viewers, you've been watching yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I pray to Allah Azza that we can all learn from the lesson of Karbala, learn from the life of Imam Hussain and make a change inside our lives. You've been watching yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Until the next episode, keep watching Madri Channel. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The special favor of Allah.